you there, say amen. amen. If you need more time, say more time. More time. Amen. <coughs> amen. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it reads, Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Mm -hmm. And when he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. Yes. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Mm, mm. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Mm. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Mm. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Mm. Then Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Mm -hmm. Our message for this morning, True Bible, is don't let go Amen. until you get your blessing. Amen. 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 Don't let go Amen. until you get your blessing. Amen. Amen. You know, we, 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 we find Amen. Jacob in Amen. a bit of a pickle. Yes, right? he is. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. funny that when uh -huh. we yes, find yes. ourselves in hard times, we like to use the terminology in a pickle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know where that came from. I didn't look that up. Maybe I should have, but I don't understand why when we in tough times we call it a pickle. Maybe because a pickle can be sour sometimes or something like that. But, 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 but Jacob has found himself in a pickle. Uh, you ever find yourself in a pickle? And, and oftentimes when you find yourself in a pickle, it's because of something you done. Uh -huh. Not necessarily something somebody else done. All right. Jacob is in the pickle because of who Jacob was. All right. You remember Jacob? He wasn't always the most honest person in the world. Uh -huh. He was very, as they say, crafty. Yeah. Uh -huh. You remember Jacob yeah. now. Jacob was the one that dressed yeah. up with the help from his mama, Rebecca, uh -huh. and went and tricked the old man uh -huh. into giving him his birthright. Uh -huh. So he stole the birthright of his older brother Esau. He stole Esau's blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. God, God, when you really think about it, you never really go into the details of, I can steal a blessing. Mm -hmm. If we could steal blessings today, we'd be rich in <laughs> Just go rob God blind of all his blessings. But that's a different situation. So, so we see Jacob had stole his brother's blessing from Esau, the birthright of the firstborn, and all the benefactors that come as a result of that. But not only did he steal his brother's birthright, which placed him into a pickle, because now his brother is mad. His brother is out to get him. You don't pump the firstborn and don't expect no consequences or repercussions. So Esau is after Jacob. Don't let me catch him. Because if I catch him, I'm going to choke him. If I catch him, I'm going to kill him. Anybody ever want to kill you because of your trickery and thievery? Anybody ever want to just get up against your case because of who you are as a person? Right, you know, sometimes we just can't help ourselves. Right, it ain't like Jacob can help himself. Jacob was just being Jacob. Sometimes you find yourself in a world of mess because you just being who you are. I just got in trouble. Why? Because I was being me. You know me? I can't hold my peace. I got to speak out and say what I think is right. Wind up in trouble because of you just being you. Mm -hmm. right. But Esau ain't the only one that's after Jacob. Right. Jacob's in trouble because he played the fool against his father-in-law, Laban. Right. He sat down and stole all Laban's cattle. Uh -huh. Using the trickery to get all the best of the cattle and flock from Laban. Uh -huh. Took both of his daughters, not just one. Uh -huh. Took both of his daughters and ran out. Uh -huh. So on the left, you got your big brother chasing you. Uh -huh. On the right, you got your father-in-law chasing you. He's in a pickle. Some of us got employers chasing us. Some of us got bill collectors chasing us. Because we just being ourselves. Oh, I pay 
pay that next week. I get around that to whatever I can get around to. And you find yourself in a pink pickle. You're just in a pickle. So he's got these two people chasing him, trying to take him out. And we come to today's text, and, and we see here, uh, 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 he, he just wants to be alone. Uh-huh. You ever want to be alone? Amen. Yeah. You ever want to get away? Amen. You ever seen that Southwest Airlines commercial uh-huh. where they say, you want to get away? Uh-huh. And uh, they use these people that's doing crazy stuff and get in trouble, and they embarrass and they want to just get away. Uh-huh. You remember the one where the man is up there trying to teach the other man how to play uh, 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 baseball on the on the on the internet uh, through the baseball game through the Wii controllers uh-huh. and he's doing this. He said, "Now go ahead and pitch me a ball." And all he got to do is move his hand. But he takes the controller and because it's so realistic, he throws the controller at the TV, hits the TV, the TV falls off the wall, and the man that owns the TV is just looking at him like, "Man, you just did you just did it break my TV?" Uh-huh. And the other guy says. Then they come in. You ever want to get away? (laughs) Sometimes when we get ourselves in situations that we cause because of us just being us, we just want to get away. Jacob is just wanting to get away. So what Jacob has done to deal with Esau, he has sent cohorts ahead of him. Each cohort is taking a gift of flocks to Esau to try to butter his bread before he gets to Jacob. He's still trying to be crafty. He's still not totally trusting God. He's trying to fix this thing himself. He just got over his situation with his father-in-law. They came to an agreement and Laban went back his way and Jacob went his way and they put up a little reminder, a little covenant that, hey, I won't ever harm you, Laban. And, and, and Jacob from Laban, I'll never harm you. So he's taking care of that, but he can't fix this Esau thing. Mm-hmm. So he's still scratching his head and saying, no, I just want to get away. So why are they going to butter up Esau? Uh, why if I'm going to break up my what's left in the two camps? So if Esau get one, at least some of us will get away. But I'm going to keep the woman I love, Rachel, not uh, 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 not not, not uh, Leah. I'm going to let Leah go with the other just in case they get killed. At least I have one wife left. So, so he's, he's a schemer at heart now. So he done broke up what's left in the two camps and say, y'all go to the left, we'll go to the right. And with the camp he's in, now he's feeling uh, very, very discouraged. He, he really wants to just get alone away from everybody, away from wife, away from kids, away from phone calls, away from text uh-huh. messages, uh-huh. away from... Uh-huh. Bills, uh-huh. away from house notes, uh-huh. away from bosses, away from church members. He uh-huh. he just want to get away. Uh-huh. <laughs> he just want to get away. So he says, you know what, wife and the rest of y'all, I'm gonna give y'all everything I got. Why don't y'all go on the other side of the Jabbok? Go on the other side of the river. I'm gonna stay here at the camp. Uh, uh, called God's Camp because I met two angels here. I'm just going to hang out here at God's Camp and I'm just going to lick my wounds because I don't want to be around nobody. You ever been there before? Uh-huh. You just don't want to be around uh-huh. nobody. You're going through some tough times. So he just wants to get away. And if we if we look at the text, we, we, we see it says that Jacob was left alone. It's funny how when you want to get away, you want to just be alone, but you tend to forget that God is omnipresent. Uh-huh. You think you're alone. You think you done got rid of all your problems. You think you done got rid of all the noise in your life. But yet, you have yet to escape God. See, 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 see. We read later on in the Bible where another person tried to get away from God. And you learn in life that no, no matter how far you run, no matter how alone you think you are, you can never escape God. You know, uh, uh, Jonah wanted to get away from God. He didn't use up all his uh, 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 boat fire. He didn't use up all his land fire. He didn't spend all his money, and he still could not get away from God. I don't care at what point you are in life. I don't care how discouraging it may look. More importantly, how discouraging it may feel, you will never get away from God. But don't act like that's a bad thing. Mm. If you are feeling the way you're feeling, the one somebody you don't want to get away from is God. So it's a good thing when you just sent your wife away. You just 
didn't send your children away. You didn't send your co-workers away. You didn't send your ministry partners away. You didn't hit all your bills under the rug as if they're going to go away. But God is still there. Look at, look, at, look, at, look, at, look, look, look at Jacob. He, he's going through all these, these hard times. And it says Jacob was left alone. So it appears that he got what he wanted. It appears that he got the aloneness that he was seeking. But all of a sudden it says a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Mm. Now this man was an angel of God. Yeah. And angels basically represent God. So if you encounter an angel, it can be said that you have encountered God because you encountered an ambassador of God. So he's all alone. And not only is he alone, but he looks up and he sees that he's really not alone. It's good to look up in the midst of your loneliness and find God. Now the last thing most of us want to do in our fit of loneliness is look up and find God but then have to wrestle with it. You find God, you want you you think that God will come in and do our dream of Jesus and fix it all. You expecting God to come in and, and take care of your situation. You see, some of us got this warped understanding of who God is. We think God is a roll of cotton candy. We think God is a dip of ice cream. In a honey covered cone. All right. We think God is there for our beck and call. Yeah. But see, sometimes when you encounter God, it's not always the experience you think it's going to be, right. but it's always the one God wants it to be. Yeah. God may think that you need to wrestle about some things. Right. Maybe you need to wrestle right. with some issues that got you right. to be who you are in the first place. Right. Maybe you're wrestling with God because yeah. God wants to see right. if you're going to persevere with yeah. him in order to persevere yeah. over your situation. Yeah. Right. Look at it. It, 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 says, it. it says, and he wrestled with this angel, this man, until daybreak. Now that is at least six hours. Now I didn't wrestle before. I didn't even try boxing before. And if you're not conditioned to box, you think your hands are lightweight? Well you can do this five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. It's nothing. But you do this for two or three rounds, your hands start thinning like sledge. You can't even lift your arm up because yeah. you are not conditioned. And we're talking one yeah. or two rounds of boxing. Oh, Most man. people can't go three rounds. Trained yeah. boxers go anywhere from 10 to 12 rounds yeah. because they're conditioned. Yes, but then you is running into God in your state of unconditioned. Yeah. And you're trying to wrestle yeah. all day long. Yeah. You would think that you would fail immediately. Yeah. Look at the text. He says they wrestled until daybreak. That's a long time to wrestle with God. Now look at this here. We have to remain persistent when we're wrestling with God, with whatever we're wrestling with God about, because if we're wrestling with God, the good part is that we are in contact with him. And if we're in contact with God, it's good that we're wrestling with him. It's better to be in contact with God than to not be in contact with God. I would rather wrestle with God and understand what God is having me wrestle with him about than to not be in the presence of God at all. Because if I'm wrestling with him, whatever's wrong with me, God can get it right with me as long as I'm hanging on to him. But if I let him go, some of us let God go in the midst of all the wrestling. We think that it's all for the bad and not for the good. Yeah. We forget where it says, I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. We need to hold on yeah. to the unchanging hand right. of the Lord. Yeah. Look, 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 look at what he said. He said, he says, and when he saw that he had not prevailed against him. So this is the angel. The angel. When it says, and when he saw that he has not prevailed against them. Now, wait a minute. An angel is a representative of God. Uh -huh. You tell me an angel representative of the holy of holies can't whoop a man? Mm. Of course he can. Yes, of course he can. God can, in a blink of an eye, lay you flat. Amen. He can just suck his, he can inhale and cause you to exhale all the life breath that you got in you. Yes. God can do whatever he want to do. So this ain't about the man actually beating the representative of God and in yeah. essence beating God. This is just to show us that the man was persistent 
not to ever give up. Yeah. 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 With God. Amen. Amen. This is showing Jacob persevered with God. When you persevere with God, you will prevail in life's trials and tribulations. You're not going to prevail against God because this ain't no fight against God. This is a fight against the devil. And sometimes you got to wrestle with God in order to get the devil off your back. So, so, so let's look at what's going on. Look, look, look at what's going on. He says that when he saw that he had not prevailed against him, I'm going to reword that. And when the angel saw that Jacob was persistent and would not give up. When God sees that you are persistent and you're not going to give up. When God sees that you are not going to throw in the towel. When God sees that you realize that he brought you this far and he's not going to leave you. Then God can begin to work on your situation. But if you give up, if you give out, if you throw in the towel, you'll never know what God is able to do in your life. Look at it. So he sees that he sees that Jacob, God is, is seeing that Jacob is persistent. God is seeing that Jacob is a perseverer. Look at this. He says, now get this. This seems kind of odd. It seems out of place in the midst of Jacob's perseverance. He says, the angel, the representative of God, touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Now, I'm wrestling with God. I'm persevering, which is another way of saying I'm prevailing. Just to hang in there with God is victory. Just to not let go of God is victory. But, 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 but I'm wrestling because I'm dealing with some things. I'm wrestling because I'm dealing with some attitude, some, some misbehavior, some personality quirk, some sin in my life. I'm wrestling so God can get it right. And I know that something ain't right, but I don't want to let go of God until he fixes it for me. And, 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 and in the midst of this act of wrestling, it takes faith to struggle with God. It takes yeah, faith just hanging there with God. Because yes, God can lay you flat than in three day old bed. Yes, look, look, look at this. It, 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 we, we see that. Uh, uh, give me that up. Amen. We see that. We, we see that all of a sudden uh, 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 the angel touches him in the hip socket. Mm. Now, I have. I'm going to call it past tense because God has blessed me. Yes. I know what hip pain is all about. Mm -hmm. I've been through hip pain. Yes, sir. I've just recently prevailed over hip pain. All right. It's very painful. Yes. <laughs> over 10 years ago when I was, well, but about quite some time now, I had surgery and radiation therapy and now at this age, Recently, I was getting this pain in my hip, and you can't touch it. You can't really get to it because it's down deep. Mm -hmm. But when you move, you can feel it. Uh -huh. And sometimes when you get up, because the lack of strength and the brittleness of the bone, uh, you get up, and you, 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 you don't have that, that, that push-off strength, and you get up, you, and you got to do that. And then you get it together. And people say, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Everything okay. <laughs> God is good. Because once you got it together, you're good. Because you stand up and you, 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 didn't, you didn't clench that muscle and you got some strength in it now, but you got it back. But catch you off guard. You're like, oh, Lord. You know, so if somebody touch in your hip socket, that's pain. Yes, so Jacob's wrestling, and now he's got hip pain. Uh -huh. He's got some godly-induced arthritis uh -huh. in his hip. And that's a test because you're wrestling with God. And you mean to tell me in the midst of you wrestling with God, God strike you with something. Yeah. That could be called the death blow. Yeah. Because at that time, you got a decision to make. Yeah. You're wrestling with God yeah. about paying these bills. Yeah. You're barely making it. You, 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 you ain't got nothing but two nickels left after you done paid your bills. And you're, you're struggling with God. You, you're asking for a new job and you got a current job. And all of a sudden you strike you in the hip socket. That could be you. Lose your job. Yes. Yeah. He didn't touch you in the hip socket. You lost your job. 
or you're doing everything you can to keep your marriage together. You're praying, you're studying, you're doing everything that God is calling you to do. You're cooking, you're cleaning, you're mowing, you do whatever it is, be it man or woman, and all of a sudden you serve with divorce papers. You've been hitting the hip socket. Yeah, yeah. You're striving with God. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the test. See, God will hit you in the hip socket yes, to see if you really yes. as faithful as you yeah, say you are. Yeah. Come on now. You got an opportunity when you get hit with that death blow. See, that hip socket was a, that was designed to make him give up. Yeah. Or it was designed to see if he was going to give up. Yeah. See, we're wrestling with God and we get hit in the hip socket and we God wants to know, okay, are you going to give up now? We've been wrestling, you've been holding on, but bam, hip socket. You give up? Say daddy, say that, say uncle, say uncle. But you won't say it. You won't say it. Or you do say it. When you do say it, that means, oh, I give up. I give up. I give up. Then everything goes downhill from there. Because you had God in your hands. You had God in your hands. And all God want to do is see if you're going to hold on. But you let go. But you let go. And when you let go of God, there's nothing more worse than letting go of God. Don't you know when that woman went up behind Jesus and touched his cloak, she became healed? Why? Because her faith made her well. God wants to know if you're going to give up. So sometimes just to test your bravado, just to test your level of commitment, see, you hanging on. You acting like you strong. You got your strong face on. You got your spiritual poker face in place. Thank you, Lord. But when God touch you in that hip socket, you got a decision to make. Yeah. Are you going to throw in the towel? We ain't even through round one. And God saying, if you just hang in there with me, all I want you to do is hang on. Even though you ain't wrestling me with your legs, you wrestling me with your arms. Wrap that lame leg around me and don't let go. Wrap that unpaid bill around him and don't let go. Wrap that unloving husband around him and don't let go. Yeah. Wrap them disobedient kids around him, but keep on hanging on. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Look at it, look at it, look, look, look at what's going on. That was test number one for him. He said, but, but, he, but, 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 but we, we see that he was dislocated in the hip. That was faith test number one. Now here goes faith test number two. This is choosing. You have to make a choice. Just like you chose to be alone in the midst of your loneliness, you got to chose not to let go of God. Look at this down in verse. It says, then he said, this is Jacob. No, no, excuse me, this is the angel. Then he said, let me go for dawn is breaking. Hmm. Now, Get this. Test number one. Test number one was he hit you in the hip socket when you thought you was doing good. You thought you was fighting a good fight. So he hit you in the hip socket. He blindsided you. In the midst of blindsided you, he's going to test you to see if you bit the bait. He says, you know, uh, he's hurting right now. I'm just going to ask him, hey, let me go. It's almost daybreak. Let me go. Hey. Now your joint pain is kicking in and your arms are weary. All because you were just being yourself and got yourself in the pickle. But you know who God is. But now you got to show who God is. And he said, let me go. The angel is saying, you let me go. The angel is testing him. Test number two. Are you just going to let go? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. God... I know you're busy. Yeah. Uh, you say you say let me go because it's about daybreak too. That means you're trying to tell me you got some other stuff you need to deal with. Right but God, while you're calling on others, yeah. do not pass me by. Yeah. Yeah. God, I know you got to deal with the yeah. people over there in Syria. Yeah. But what about me right here yeah. in Houston, Texas? Yeah. God, I know you got to deal with all the people that were killed on the Navy Yard. Yes. But what about just feeding me today? Yeah. God, I know there's some yeah. other important stuff going on. Yeah. But now I know daybreak is coming. Yeah. I know you got other stuff to do. But God, I read where you are omnipresent. Yeah. So even though yeah. day is breaking, even though you can be on the other side of the world and deal with Syria, you can still deal with me resting right here in Houston, Texas. Even though you're over there on the Navy Yards dealing with
with the man that shot 12 dead, you can still address my issues right here at this address on this corner. God, I know yes, sir. you will never leave me, nor will you ever forsake me. You got a choice to make. God, broken hip, weary arms, tricks the nature, whatever I am, God, you brought me into this world, and only you can change me. And I know toward the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. My help coming from you. I'm not going to let you go when my hip is hurting. I'm not going to let you go when my father-in-law just gave up chasing me. I'm not going to let you go even though my brother chasing me. I'm not going to let you go even though my marriage is falling apart. I'm not going to let you go even though my wife on the other side of the water. I'm not going to let you go even though I'm not getting that raise I was expecting. I'm not going to let you go even though I keep coming down with these little silly little illnesses. I'm not going to let you go even though it look like there's difficulty going on at the church house. I'm not going to let you go even though people are focused on the door. I'm not going to let you go because I'm not concerned about what's outside. I'm not going to let you go because I'm concerned about what's up there. I'm not going to let you go, God. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. No, no, not me. It ain't going down that way. Sometimes you got to tell God with regards to loving him, with regards to never leaving him, God, I don't care what I encounter today. I'm not going to let you go. I don't care what you test me with, Lord. I'm trusting in you to increase my level of faith to the point to where I will pass whatever test you bring. I'm not going to let you go, God. I'm not going to let you go. People sick in my life. I'm not going to let you go, God. People turn their back on. I'm not going to let you go, God. I got this addiction that I'm struck. I'm not going to let you go, God. I got this attitude, this mentality that rubs people wrong. I'm not going to let you go, God. Change me. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to let you go. So, God, if I pass test number one of you striking me in my socket, to you be the glory. God, if I can pass that, I'm not just going to let you go because you asked me to let you go. It goes against your word. So this got to be a test. This got to be a test. Your word says you will never leave me, nor forsake me. So if I let you go, that means you leave me. This is a test, God. This is a test of the emergency faith cast system. This is only a test. Please tune in to Holy Bible 101 to get the latest breaking instructions on what to do when you encounter this trial. This is only a test. Yeah. Eh, eh, eh. My Lord, my Lord. Just a test. Look at, look at, look, 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 look at Jacob. Jacob is saying, he says, uh, 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 I will not let you go unless you bless me. You want to get bold with God? Yes. It's okay to be, to get bold with God as long as you do it the right way. Yeah. Don't say, God, I'm going to go out there and sin. I don't care what you do. Well, you going to die. <laughs> but he says, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. Y'all right. got to hold on. I must hold on. We got to hold on. Yes. Individually, we must hold on. Yes. As a church, we must hold on yes. until the Lord Amen. blesses us. Amen. Don't yes. let go. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you, Father. Arsenio Hall said it best when he was a preacher and coming to America. He says, hold on to God's unchanging hand. He <laughs> helped Joshua fight the battle of Jericho. Yes. <laughs> He said, he said, he got Gilligan <laughs> off the island. Oh. So enough, so enough. If God can get Gilligan oh, off the island. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When I was growing up, yes, I never thought Gilligan was going to get off that island. So enough. Me and Sister Davis would sit there and watch Gilligan's Island. And like every time they get ready to go, something oh, stupid would happen. Yeah. And they'd be stuck on that island. Yeah. And at the end, they'd be all sitting there together, the millionaire and his wife, the movie star. 
and the rest. But if he can get Gilligan off the island, that's symbolically. He, if he can get Gilligan off the island, that's nothing God can do. And guess what? Gilligan got off that island. By the time he got off the island, nobody cared, don't know. But he got off. He got off. You can't let go of God. You can't do it. Look, 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 look at what he's saying here. And that not only do you hold on, the, 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 see here, Jacob is saying, I won't let go until you bless me. Yeah. Indicating that when you bless me, I'm going to let go. That may work for Jacob. I don't know about that, but God, when you bless me, I'm going to keep on hanging on. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I'm not going to let go unless you bless me. I, I, listen, that's good. If you want to let go, hey, listen. If God blessed me because I held on, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, but if he blessed me because I held on, why would I want to let go? Amen. I think I'm going to hang on. I think I got a winning formula here. Yeah. Hang on and get blessed. Hang on and get blessed. What can I deduce from that? Don't let go. Amen. Don't let go. Amen. I don't want one blessing. Well, who just need one blessing? I need a whole bunch of blessings. Yeah. I need waking up blessings. I need eating blessing. Amen. I need peace as I leave the house. Amen. I need a blessing from my wife, a blessing from my children. I need a blessing from my, my co-workers. I need a blessing from my car start. I need Amen. blessings to put some gas up in that Amen. sucker. I need some blessings just to eat when I get home. I need some blessings to eat while I'm on the job. I need some blessings to deal with that racist person I encountered on the job. I need some blessings not to curse them. I need some blessings just to deal with my blessings. I need all kinds of blessings. So I'm going to hold on to the Lord and not let go. And when he blessed me, Jacob was good enough to be blessed and let go. When he blessed me, I'm going to keep on. Hey, I bless you. Let me go. I bless you. I'm sorry, God. I like that. I'm going to keep on coming, Lord. Label me a blessing junkie. Amen. Hold on. Give me blessing. Give me blessing. Give me blessing. Gotta have blessing. Yes. Know them junkies. Give me drugs. Give me drugs. Give me blessing. 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 I need blessings. Ain't too much blessings. You got any of your blessings, you go for it. Yeah. You, you got an overflow of blessings, you get the rest up to me. Yeah. I pull up quick and retrieve them. Yeah. Give me blessings. My Lord. My, my, my. Look at this, look, 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 look at this. Look at this, look at this. So, 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 so he says, but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That is choosing not to let go of God until God blesses you. If we just choose to not let go until God blesses us, we win the battle. We win the battle. It's just about hanging on. Yes. Remember that saying, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on? Hallelujah. Just tie a knot in your rope of faith yeah. and hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at now, 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 when you hang on, you will see that God will start working on you. And when God start working on you, it don't always feel good because when God start working on you, first he calls you out. He has to expose your ID. He has to expose your identification. See, many of us walking around uh, incognito. We looking saintly. But we ain't that saintly. Yeah. We talking spiritually, yes, but we ain't singing spiritually. Yeah. We ain't praying spiritually. Yeah. Come on. So your ID has to be exposed. See, when you hang on to God, there's 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 good things gonna happen, but don't nothing good come without a little pain. All right. Yeah. And, and and you heard the statement, the truth hurts. All right. See, yeah. sometimes God has to show us who we really are. Yeah. What, what am I talking about? You're looking at he he'll expose your ID. So the angel said to him. After Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, the angel said, what's your name? What's your name? You want to be blessed? Let's start a dialogue. Let's get to know each other better. Now, God, I already know you. I just want to expose you. He said, you want a blessing? Okay, I can hit you in the hip socket and you did let it go. Check for you. You done struggled all night. Check for you. I didn't ask you to let me go because I got more important business. You didn't let me go. Check for you. 
What's your name? Now you got to come clean. You got to come clean. See, there's a lot in the name. There's a lot in the name. Look here. He, 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 said, he says, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. See, see, that just sounds like a name to you. But see, in the Bible days, your name described typically the type of person you was. You normally took on the identity of what your name implied. You see, Jacob meant supplanter. Supplanter or place taker. One who takes somebody else's place. And because his mama named him place taker, he became a place taker. He took Esau's place when it came to getting the birthright. See, when you're a place taker, don't nobody just step aside and let you take their place. If you're going to take their place, you got to have some shystiness about you. You got to have some trickery about you. You got to have some charlatanry about you. He was a charlatan. He was a trickster. He was Jacob the trickster. Jacob the weasel. That's who he was. You ever dealt with a person with a weasel-like mentality? That means you, you can't never trust them. They turn you back, they didn't got your wife. Yeah. You turn you back, they didn't got your money. You turn you back, they didn't got your car. You turn you back, they didn't got your job. Right. Yeah. He was a weasel. Mm. And the angel said, what's your name? And he had to say, weasel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. God is saying, yeah. what's your name? Yeah. Liar. What's your name? Adulterer. What's your name? Weak in faith. What's your name? Thief. What's your name? Slacker. What's your name? What is your name? We all got a name. And unless our name is Jesus, our name ain't good. I don't even, sometimes we name our kids, we don't know what we name them. <laughs> God say, what's your name? I don't know. Yeah. Meaning, I, we don't know what it means. Yeah. Chantakwalika. <laughs> what's your name? I have no idea what it means. That's just what it is. <laughs> I looked up my name. Mama Lot. I never quite asked her why. I, I assume since Martin Luther King had a child named Dexter and Yolanda, and she's shaking her head. She said, no. I couldn't figure out why they named us Yolanda and Dexter. So we, we, I rolled that King thing for as long as I could. <laughs> Obviously, that was wrong. But when I looked up, I'm going to ask her why she named me Dexter after church. Went, but I looked up Dexter. And Dexter means to the right of. Thank you. You didn't even know that. <laughs> it means to the right of, at the right side of. Amen. Made me proud. Amen. I'd like to think that that was planned, but even if it wasn't, check for me. <laughs> but I have not always lived up to my name. I know many situations where I have been to the left of. <laughs> Like the other say, to the left, to the left. And that was me in that corner. I was that box. All with all that stuff in it. That was me. I've been to the right on some occasions, but I got to even be careful saying that because if I get to saying that too much, then it sounds arrogant and that puts me back on the left. So, 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 so a lot is in the name. And when they named him Jacob, they cursed that boy. They made him into a shysting, weaseling, conniving, scheming son of a god. And that's what he was. And not only that, he was good. He was good. He built wealth and riches off of tricking people. And God said, your day of reckoning is here. What is your name? My name is Steel Cattle from my father-in-law. My name is Take my older brother's birthright. Yes. My name is lied to my daddy yes. in the midst of his old age all of blindness. Right, right. That is my name. 
My name is Plot and Scheme. Whenever I feel the need to plot and scheme. What is your name? Whatever your name is, if your name is adulterer, if your name is lack of yeah. faith, if your name is thief, if your name is unbeliever, whatever your name is, you've got to get a name change when you're talking about holding on to God. Amen. Whatever you Amen. do, when you hold on to God, your name, the name that your mama and daddy gave you, is no longer sufficient. Yeah. God has to rename you when you come to him. Just like all those who come to Christ are not themselves anymore, yes. but we belong to God. Yeah. So he gets to rename us. Yeah. So, so, so look, at, look, 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 look at the renaming. He said, he said to him, what is your name? And he said, place taker. He said shyster. He said Jacob. And look at there is a change of ID required if you're going to stay on God's roster. Look at the next text. It says and he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob. Your name shall no longer be place taker. Your name shall no longer be supplanter. Your name shall no longer be thief. Your name shall no longer be trickster. Your name shall no longer be unemployed. Your name shall no longer be no transportation. Your name shall no longer be physically sick. Your name shall no longer be lack of finances. Your name shall no longer be problems with the children, problems with the husband. Your name, your name shall no longer be problems in the church. Your name has to change. Amen. Because names play games in our head. Yes. As a man thinketh, so is he. Yeah. So if I'm thinking about tricking all day long because every time somebody calls my name, that's what they call calling me. I'm, if I can't beat them, I might as well join them. So if I want to get away from that, I've got to get a name change. If you want to get away from unemployment, you got to get a name change. If you want to get away from dead worship and praise, you got to get a name change. If you want to get away from lack of uh, fervor for God, you've got to get a name change. Anybody need a name change? Yeah. Anybody need a name change? Let's look at this. He says, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Wow. God says, I'm going to rename you Victory. Because you have striven with yeah. God, you got hit in your hip socket, yeah. your hands are tired, you wrestled all night, you didn't give in when I said let me go, it's time to change your name to victory. It's yeah. time to change your name to victor. Yeah. It's time to change your name to, un to from unemployed to employed, yeah. from adulterer to fidelity. Yeah. It's time to change your name. What's your name? Your name, not the name God gave you. Whatever that name is, and I'm not talking about the name your mama gave you. I'm talking about your character name. Amen. That what you do that describes you as a person. Not what people say, well, I saw John Doe. I, you know, the, the, what they don't use to describe you is your name. If you're always angry, people don't know. Man, don't go around him. He always got it. Chip on his shoulder. I don't know. That's who you become. Yes, sir. Yeah. God said, I'm going to change that from chip on the shoulder to pleasant. Yeah. Easy to be around. Yeah. He wants to change your name. Mm -hmm. If you're going to strive with him, if you're not going to give up, you might as well let him change your name. Amen. Change your name. And he says, your name is no longer Jacob, but Israel, because you have striven with God and have prevailed. He said, you didn't give up. You persevered through trial and tribulation in the presence of the Lord. You didn't let go. You didn't throw in the towel. You didn't raise the white flag. And not only this. See, we can strive with God and hang on, but he says, you have striven with God and with men. So this works from the spiritual all the way down to the physical. You can strive with God, but if you strive with God and don't strive with men, then don't say you strive with God. Because if you can't strive with men, you ain't striving with God. If you got it down with God, you got it down with man. 
Because in order to deal with man, you got to go up first before you go out. And when you go up, then you got the strength to go out. Yeah. Now you're looking like the cross. Amen. He wants to change your name. Amen. Let him change your name. Whatever your name is, say, God, you can have that. And you ain't got to put an X there. God will put a name there. You don't have to, I'm Tiffany X. No, 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 no. I'm Tiffany Victorious. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Let God change your name. Look at this. Not only does he change your ID, that signifies that you have prevailed with God when you get your name changed. Sometimes you just have to say things the way you want them to be in order to receive the reward. But it's not about the name that's important of who changed your name. It is about the source of who changed your name. Yeah. Look at the text. It says, then Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. Now, Jake, Jake, you're going a little too far. Now, God done took you. He done changed your name from shyster, from supplanter, from place taker to one who strives with God and prevails. God asked you your name, and now you're going to turn around and ask him, what is your name, Jacob? Are you reverted? <laughs> are, 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 is, is some of that still in you? Why do you need to know my name? You, you, you want to you get something going on the sly here? The angel said, wait a minute. Why do you ask me my name? When God blesses us, right. just learn how to be blessed. Amen. 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 Let, let's, let's, Amen. Let's, let's not... Make a theology out of it. Yes. Let's not make a science out of it. Amen. Just say, God, I receive it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, yes. just thank you for your blessing. You, and you know what? I don't need to know your name. All thank I need to Lord. know is who you are. Yes. And you are God. And besides you, there is no other. Now, if I want to know your name, I can know your name. Your name is I am. Yes. I am whatever I need. He is whatever we need. That is his name. I am. He who exists yeah. to meet all our needs. Amen. Yeah. And then some. Yeah. But he says, when I meet your need, don't be concerned about my name. Be concerned about what I did for you. Amen. Yeah. And just receive it and give me glory. Amen. Sometimes Amen. God blesses us and we want to go and start acting like we him. Yeah. <laughs> We want to start opening up stores and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and selling holy water and, and blessed hankies and all of them. And God has blessed us one time. Amen. All we got to do is just take the blessing and be about our business with it and give God the glory. Whatever he bless you. Knowledge, put it to work for God. Finances, put it to work for God. Wisdom, put it to work for God. Household, put them to work for God. Children, put them to work for God. Wives, put them on their knees for God. Husbands, put them on their knees for God. Just take your blessing and give it back to God. Amen. Don't be getting all into what's your name. That, 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 that sounds kind of disrespectful. What's your name? My name is Jacob. Okay, your name is now Israel. What's your name? So, whoa, you get, get back in your place. Just receive your blessing. Look at the text. He says, he said, and when Jacob finally realized that, he was able to be blessed. He says, and he blessed him there. Mm -hmm. Blessed him with what? Blessed him with what he stood in need of. Amen. Blessed him with what he was asking for. He stood in need of relief yeah. from those trying to terrorize him. Yes. He stood in relief of Esau trying to kill him. He prayed in the same chapter at the beginning for God to give him a way out of being killed from his brother. And regardless of all the scheming that Jacob did, mm. all Israel had to do is let God be God. Amen. And when Israel let God be God, you'll read in the next chapter that when he went up to his brother Esau, yeah. it wasn't even about all the presents yeah. that he sent. Yeah. 
It was about God moving and Jacob giving his life over to him, turning over from Jacob to one who strives with God and prevails, and let God fight your battles. Yeah. If we can ever just let God fight our battles for us, yes. our enemies yeah. will fall at our feet. Yes. We don't have to work overtime, racking our mind with yes. plots and schemes and all of these other type of things we think that's going to get us where we want to be. We don't have to deal with all the bill collect. God, hey, change my name and change the game. Change my name Amen. and change the game. Let me be victorious today. Yes. Put my enemies at my feet, Lord. Make my enemies my friends. Mm -hmm. If you got enemies that need to be your friends, God can fix it. Yeah. Don't let go until you get your blessing. Amen. Amen. Hang on to God Amen. until you get your blessing. Amen. Matter of fact, keep on holding on to him even after you get your blessing. Hang on to God. Most gracious.